Won't You Be My Neighbor is the latest documentary about Mr. Rogers, and specifically his television series, Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. Now, if you grew up watching this television series, you understand the kind of impact this man had. So today, I'm going to be talking about my thoughts about this documentary. In case you have not seen it yet, for this first half, I'll just be giving you an overview of what to expect, and in the second half, I will be talking about specific spoilers inside the documentary. But before we get into that, I'm just going to give you my initial thoughts on this documentary. This documentary, honestly, was really well put together. There are a lot of specific people in Mr. Rogers' life that are featured in this documentary, from his wife to his children to specific characters or producers that were working on the show with him. It talks about his background of being a minister and kind of his reasoning for wanting to get into television and his success as it's grown over the years. You know, it's actually kind of amazing to, to think about it, that this show from anywhere from the 70s up until the 2000s that this was on the air. That's almost four decades of people that this man has influenced. They dive into a lot of specifics of either bits he had on the show or characters, or the reason for why he was doing what he did. But ultimately, it all kind of stems from this idea that you just need to love your neighbor. And I think in in times like this, it kind of makes you wonder, you know, where is this type of love that Mr. Rogers encouraged us all to have? And the end of this documentary almost gives a call of action in a way. It kind of wants us to step forward and to love our neighbor. Something very interesting about this documentary is the points of history that you can see throughout it. You imagine these significant events throughout American culture that happened during his television show, and he touched on a lot of them. I think one of my favorite things about this documentary is that it actually used real footage from Fred Rogers. It kind of switched back and forth, so they'd be talking about a specific point of his show, and you would see interviews from him himself explaining how they put it together. That mixed with comments from all his loved ones growing up over the years is really special, and it makes this documentary really enjoyable to watch. If you have not seen it, I am about to talk about spoilers. Stay if you wish, but I cannot encourage you enough. Go see this movie. So every time you watch a documentary like this, you kind of go in with caution because you don't want to learn something about this person that you idolize that you might not like about them. And I think one of the coolest parts about this is Mr. Rogers really doesn't have much of that. Now there is one situation I've seen a lot of people look at in this documentary and kind of discuss, and that is the issue of handling Officer Clemens. Mr. Rogers wanted to be very intentional about bringing a black figure onto the television show that kids can look up to. One of my favorite parts of the movie is they're kind of showing throughout history, this was a time when America was very segregated. Specifically, there were instances in the South where blacks and whites couldn't even swim in the same pool together. And there's this, there's this scene where Mr. Rogers is sitting out in his front lawn in a kiddie pool, and Officer Clemens comes over, and Mr. Rogers invites him to just dip his feet in this pool. And Mr. Rogers kind of looks at the camera, and he just says, it's amazing what a minute can do. Now, looking in the context, he was kind of talking about, you know, cooling off your feet in a hot day. And this was kind of subtle, but it was very intentional, making this political statement that we can go swimming in the same pool together. But the issue that Officer Clemens did have on the show is that he, at the time, did identify as homosexual. He did talk about this issue a little bit because Mr. Rogers, at the time, did not want Officer Clemens out publicly as a gay man while being on his television show. And it's the type of issue that, if it were to happen today, I'm sure it would be a lot more controversial. But at the time, Mr. Rogers kind of just explained that this was not something that the public was ready to accept yet. And so if I had to pin down one moment throughout this documentary where Mr. Rogers maybe wasn't the most perfect human being, I think it would be this. And Officer Clemens talks about it. He talks about his relationship with Mr. Rogers. And he expresses that he understood why Fred Rogers did what he did. And he understands that he loved him the whole time despite his lifestyle. It just wasn't ready to be on public television yet. And I honestly love the documentary talked about this. They didn't shy away from it. They didn't pretend like it didn't happen. They just presented it in a way that at the time, this is how the world operated. Whether or not the situation would have been handled the same way today, that's how they handled it then, and they were able to still love each other through it. One of my favorite archive footage that is shown in this documentary actually comes from the very first scene. And it opens up with Miss Rogers playing the piano and he describes modulations and switching from a C chord to an F chord and how that's so much easier than from a C to a B flat. And if you're not a musician, you probably don't understand what that means, 
But he uses this analogy as a way as some seasons in life are easier to transition into and there are some that are more difficult to do. I think that kind of summarizes what Mr. Rogers is and what he stands for. He takes these situations that everyone goes through and uses simple things to describe them. The Land of Make Believe was a very specific tool that he used to explain things to children. There's a scene that we see where one of the puppets at the time, Daniel Tiger, was asking what the word assassination meant. This happened right after Robert Kennedy was assassinated. And so Mr. Rogers uses this tool to explain to children what assassination means. And not only explain what it means, but how do we get through it as a country, as a family, as a community, as neighbors. I'm gonna be honest, at the end of this documentary, it was actually a little more depressing than I thought it would be. A few years after Mr. Rogers' neighborhood ended, 9-11 happened. And they, and they had brought Mr. Rogers back on TV just to do one public service announcement for the children. And they describe how Mr. Rogers almost didn't want to do it. That he was so lost and confused with the world that he didn't even know how to explain this to these children. And it's honestly shocking that he doesn't even know what to do in a situation like this. And obviously since 9-11 there have been so many more things that happened in this world. And you have to wonder, who is the person that is stepping up to be the next Mr. Rogers? Like I said, I cannot recommend this movie enough. I am definitely going to make sure I see it again. I think Mr. Rogers is going to be an individual that I've talked about for many years to come. Next year, we are expecting to see Tom Hanks portray him in a film, and I am excited to see how that works. So have you seen Won't You Be My Neighbor? If you have, please comment below and tell me your thoughts. I would love to hear back from you, specifically what you enjoyed about this documentary. And please tell me, who is the next Mr. Rogers?